Welcome to Lincoln Community Church. We call this place home. And if today is your first day with us, we want to say, Welcome home. Joshua 24 15. And if it is desirable for you to serve the Lord, choose this day who you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It seems that God gives us a choice whether to worship Him or not. Can I tell you? You have chosen well today. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and call us your children. We thank you for the blessings that we have today and the, the hope that we have tomorrow through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We would invite your spirit to fill this sanctuary, touch every heart and every mind. And when we leave this place, let us be able to say in our heart, it was good to be in the house of the Lord. We ask these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing. Amen. A little test for you this morning. Take your left hand, left hand, put it up like this, okay? Take your right hand, oh, this is your left hand. Take your right hand, put it up like this, and then do this. Good. Now, let's do this. Ready? I came to Jesus, weary, worn, and sad. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. Good job.
folks up in front here, you're doing a really good job. You've stayed with me for two uh, verses already. You folks in the back, not so much. You know, you're falling off on me back there. I can see you though, all right? So you folks up here in the front, you get an extra cookie after the service today, all right? You folks could earn another one too on this next verse. You ready? Here we go. No condemnation have I in my heart. yourselves a hand. Amen. And then let's give a clap offering to the Lord this morning. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Here's a question for you. Are you washed in the blood this morning? If you're not, you are in the right place. Amen. Because Jesus is here today and he can wash you in the blood. Amen. Let's sing it together. Here we go. All right. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washing the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? singing you may be seated at Lincoln Community Church it is our habit that on the first Sunday of every month we celebrate the Lord's Supper 
And we invite you, if, even if you're not a member of Lincoln Community Church, but you're a believer in Jesus Christ, if you are a child of God, if you have trusted Jesus, we invite you to share the Lord's Supper with us today. The Lord's Supper is a reminder of what Jesus did for us in the past. It's a symbol of our relationship with Him. It's a promise of our future to come. And on the evening that Jesus was betrayed, He took some bread gave it to his disciples and he said this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me and when we participate in the Lord's Supper we take that small piece of bread and we remember Jesus sacrifice on the cross in the same way after supper Jesus took the cup said this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you and when we drink a small amount of the fruit of the vine, we remember that Jesus shed his blood for us, that we have a promise in the kingdom for, in heaven forever. So the Lord's Supper looks back to the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, a precious gift that was his personal sacrifice. So the Lord's Supper, although a memorial of a death, it's not as if Jesus is still dead. But instead, we observe the Lord's Supper knowing that death could not hold Jesus Christ. And as a child of God, death has no power over us. Amen. Amen. So coming to the Lord's table today and having communion should be a celebration, Amen. not a funeral. So the Lord's Supper helps us look upward toward Christ to be reminded that eternal life is ours. Pastor J.R., would you ask a blessing for the cup? Sure. Great. Our Father, we are so thankful that we're able to be here this morning to be in your house to worship you and honor you and glorify you. And Father, we just want to thank you for allowing your blood to be shed and your body to be broken in our place so that we might have eternal life and spend eternity with you, Father. There's no way that we could ever repay you for such a gift of your grace, except to serve you with our whole soul, body, and mind for the rest of our lives. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. pass out the elements, I'm going to ask you not to um, open them until I um, give us some instructions. second chapter Luke writes when the hour came Jesus reclined at the table the apostles with him and he said to his apostles I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I say to you I shall not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God and when he had said this, he taken the cup, he gave thanks, and he said, take this, share it among yourselves. For I will not eat of the fruit and drink of the vine until the kingdom of God arrives for every heart.
And when Jesus had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is being given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. On this cup, you'll notice that there's two sides. And turn the small side up. Go ahead and peel that back and take that wafer out of there. It is a symbol of a life that was given on the cross for us. And Jesus gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat. then go ahead and turn the cup over and pull that back to reveal the juice. Jesus blessed the cup and then he said this is the new covenant in my blood which is given for you. Take, drink. If you hold on to them for just a second our volunteers are going to come by with a little box and pick them up for you. While they're picking up the empty cups, let's go ahead and sing this song together. His grace is sufficient. Amen? Hopefully you know this one. Here we go. Many times I've tried and tested as I
bless you so much this morning. Amen. All right. Well, Pastor has already welcomed you here this morning, but I'd also like to do that, say welcome to you. Thank you all for being here. You could be any place in the world today, but you've chosen to be here. Thank you so much. Our altar flowers this morning are provided by an anonymous donor to welcome Pastor Jody as our new senior pastor. Thank you so much for those beautiful flowers that helps brighten up our sanctuary. And we have some flowers over here uh, from yesterday's memorial. We had a memorial for the Hilger family, and they donated these for our beautiful sanctuary this morning. So thank you, Hilger family. Appreciate that. We have some anniversaries this morning, and uh, Jean and Mary Lou Bell are celebrating their 47th wedding anniversary. God bless you guys. And Ford and Paula Davies are celebrating their 45th anniversary. I asked Ford, I said, Ford, what are you getting Paula for uh, their anniversary? He said, well, you know, I've been, I didn't, I couldn't really think anything. So I just finally asked her, would you like to have a new diamond ring for your anniversary? Paula looked at Ford and she said, nothing could make me happier. Ford said, so I got her nothing. <laughs> Way to go, Ford. <laughs> Listen, there's going to be another anniversary to celebrate about a year from now because Fred Bueller and Cheryl Kane have decided that they are going to get married on January 20th at 1 p.m. right here in Lincoln Community Church. Amen? All right. Do you know, do you know Fred and, and Cheryl? Cheryl, stand up. Where's, where's Fred at? Fred, where are you at? He's hiding. Congratulations. I guess we won't see Fred until the 20th? I don't know. I don't know if you know what this is. That's our Connections News magazine. We put this out once a month. Everything you ever wanted to know about this church, and then some, is in here. It is available today. When you leave today, they'll be outside. You can pick them up. They can direct you to where they're at. I think they're over to, as you're going out the door to your right there. But grab one of those. They're great things to have. Also, some time back, we talked about getting a choir together again. All right? And uh, Sister Karen Eulajohn, who's sitting right down here in the front, she used to be our choir director, and then COVID hit, and that just kind of messed up everything. And we haven't been able to get anything back together yet. Uh, but January 17th, at 1 o'clock, we're going to have a planning meeting. And anybody, we've already had several people uh, sign up and express their interest. But anybody that, that is interested in being a part of that, we would ask you to Take that little yellow slip that's in your bulletin, your program today, and put on there choir, your name, phone number, and drop it in that uh, offering basket as it goes around today. All right? So many good things happened. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then uh, finally, with the start of a new year, comes a new wonderful round of Bible studies. They're all in your program. You can take a look at those. But Wednesday mornings, Wednesday evenings, Pastor Jody is going to be continuing his Bible study. They're going to be in the book of Romans. And that's at, uh, the morning session is at 10. The evening session starts at 5. And the Women of the Word, the WOW Bible study, returns this Thursday. And they're going to be studying living the Christian life. So if you're interested in that, make sure you're there. That's uh, this Thursday, the 11th at 10 a.m. And then the Bible study fellowship, BSF, Starts this too. Everything's starting this week, isn't it? My goodness. It must be a new year. This Tuesday, January 9th at, at um, uh, what time does that start? 6.30. 6.30 p.m. And then lastly, a new grief share session starts this Tuesday, January 9th at 1 p.m. So if you're interested in being part of that group, again, take that little yellow slip, fill it out, write grief share on it. I believe there might be a box on there that you could check. 
uh, that lets people know that you're interested and drop it in that uh, offering basket. Finally, there are a lot of people listed in our bulletin that need prayer. There's, there's several listed up on top, and then down at the bottom there's continuing prayer. There's a whole group of people down there that are continually needing our prayer. And we're going to do that. We're going to pray for them. We're not going to mention each and every one. We just did want to mention particularly that this week we found out that Charlene Mullins had a fall. We don't know the extent of her injuries yet, but she did have a fall. So we need to, we need to lift her up in prayer. But maybe this morning there's someone in your family, maybe your friends, maybe your neighborhood that needs prayer also. As Jim plays softly on the organ, take a moment, if you would, to bring those people to the Lord and then allow me to pray for all of us. thankful that as your children we can bring our prayers and our petitions directly to you and to know and have the full assurance that you hear us you hear every prayer that we lift to you father we pray this morning that you would be with the people who are listed in our program this morning that are needing prayer people who have fallen people who have had surgeries people who are grieving Lord, the list goes on and on. But we know that you know each one. You know each situation. And we pray that you would have your divine will in each of those situations. And Lord, as we close our prayer, we always want to remember how you taught us to pray in your word. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you.
and uh, Pastor Jody to join me up here, please. And while they're doing that, I want to review one thing. Uh, let's talk about how we arrived at this point. Uh, last year, the selection committee uh, met and then they made a recommendation that Pastor Jody uh, be the one to fill the position of uh, senior pastor. Uh, then what happened is the elders agreed with that. Uh, we had a senior pastor then, he agreed with that. We took that information and gave it to uh, the congregation and the congregation had a vote and that vote agreed with that. And so Pastor Jody uh, graciously said, yes, I'll fill that position and he did that uh, as effective January 1st. The one thing we didn't do in that process, which is pretty standard in the Old Testament, is that when they got a new leader, what they did is they anointed him with oil. And um, usually what they did is they dumped oil on his head. Now, I'm not gonna do that to Pastor Jody today. Uh, <clears throat> what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take the time to anoint him and to remind us and to remind him that besides just filling the physical position uh, for this church, that he is the spiritual leader for us in this church and for the people who reside here. Uh, while I'm doing this, I would ask uh, Elder uh, Dave Sawson if he would uh, pray for us. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing Pastor Jody to Lincoln Community Church. <clears throat> we ask for your blessings as we lift him up as our new senior pastor. May your Holy Spirit guide him as he leads your church now and into the future. And we ask all of this in the most precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 What you couldn't see while uh, I'll get the mic up in just a minute. What you couldn't see while he was praying is that I did anoint him and I chose to anoint him on his neck. And there's a reason for that because that's the part of his body he uses to bow his head when he goes to God to ask for direction in leading us. Oh. Thank you, guys. notice this or not, but I'm a little bit nervous today. I started a new job this week. And, uh, I cannot count how many times I have felt the peace of God in my life, and I cannot number how many times I felt the joy of my life, or the joy of the Lord in my life. But this week, I felt the joy and the peace of the Lord in ways I'd never felt it before. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. And don't stop praying for your pastor. Today I've entitled the sermon, Vision. We will start out in Proverbs, the 29th chapter. The 18th verse. Proverbs 29, 18 where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Many years ago, I attended a pastor's conference, and one evening as a group of pastors were sitting around a table, one of the pastors shared this story with us. As a boy, he helped paint a new mural behind the pulpit. And the picture was of a rolling green hills, under a blue sky with three blank crosses, or three empty crosses on the foreground. And on that mural were the words, where there is no vision, the people perish, written in decals. The congregation loved it. The boy was very proud of the part that he took part in, in the finished mural. 
And he told us some 20 years later, he found himself back in his own town and wanting to see how the church was doing, wanting to see how the, the mural that he had worked on was doing, he decided to attend there on that Sunday morning. He remembered the church as a large, well-kept building. He recalled the loving congregation with children running about. There were a number of senior adults in a very big youth group that he was part of when he had helped with the mural. The church had a large choir, and on some Sundays, if you didn't get there early, you had to sit in the front row because all the good seats in the back had already been taken. <laughs> but when he arrived on this morning, the grounds were not very well kept up. The paint was peeling off of the building, and the parking lot, he said, was almost empty. He said there were a handful of people there for the service, and when he walked in, no one, no one greeted him. He sat down, then he noticed the painting that he had worked on those many years ago. He said the paint had faded somewhat, but re really caught my attention was the lettering. Because it no longer said where there is no vision, the people perish. You see, the W had fallen off. And in big, bold, black letters, it said here, there is no vision. The people perish. You know, we are all able to see with our eyes, and that's one definition of the word vision, seeing the ability of sight. But it's not the only definition of the word vision. It can mean the ability to think about and plan the future with wisdom and imagination. And so we need to ask ourselves, why is this word vision in this passage? Is the Bible talking about the ability to see? Or is the Bible talking about casting a vision of what our church could be? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and call us your children. We thank you for the, the opportunity that we get to come before your throne. And so we would invite your spirit to lead us today. Teach us what you want us to know. And we would be so grateful, Lord, that we would tell you thank you in advance. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I think this verse must be talking about the ability to conceive new ideas. Vision is our foresight about things to come. And when I read that vision, or when I read that verse, I think where there is no vision, where there's no revelation of God and His Word, where there is no prophet to speak the Word of God, where there's no forgiveness, where there's no love, where there's no grace, the people perish. Where the Word of the Lord is scarce, the people are divided, and there's no hope for the future. Where there's no vision, the people are easily distracted. They are separated by God with their own desires. Where there is no vision of God's plan, the people perish. And if that's true, then the opposite is also true. Where the word of God is read and rightly spoken, where there is forgiveness, where the faithful people have one mind and one spirit, there is hope, and the people do not perish, they thrive. Amen. And if we choose to only walk in the sight of the moment, we are destined to perish because we will not see what's ahead of us, and any church could fall into a pit. Today's churches need vision. Our church needs vision. When the nominating committee interviewed me to be your senior pastor, they asked me what my vision was for the church. And my answer is, no one man can cast a vision for an entire church. It has to be done by the members of the church, by the men and women sitting around you, by the members of this church, by the regular attenders. That's who's going to cast the vision. And if we look to the Lord for the vision of the things to come, we will walk in the light of His way. When we seek God's purpose and adopt his vision, we will not stumble in the dark. So, I'm thinking, what is God going to do in our church? 
I don't know. I don't know. But isn't it exciting to think about it? What is God going to do in our church? There is a famous book called Experiencing God written by Henry Blackaby. And he wrote, watch to see where God is working. Then join him in his work. Look around Lincoln Community Church. There's no doubt that God is working at Lincoln Community Church. And we need to take from everyone's experience and everyone's education and cast the vision that will glorify God in our church. You see, we cannot just sit and let the world go by. We need to reach out to a lost world by first, first reaching out to each other. And I'm not the one man to cast that, that vision. I would be foolish to have so many people around here and not utilize them and your wisdom. We know our church has had to do a couple of things different the last few years. And with God's help, he's brought us to the place where we are today. And I'm not comfortable moving forward without a vision. I think there's danger of standing still. We cannot be satisfied by doing nothing. And that's why the Bible warns us. Where there is no vision, the people perish. I'm not ready to perish. I've been preaching for more than 30 years, and I've never preached one half of a verse. So I want us to see the second half of this verse. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. How can our church be happy if we do not hear the word of God? and then do what we've heard. You see, the reason that we're happy is because of the vision we have been given by the Word of God. It's the vision. It's the vision that makes us happy. It's not just having the Word of God, but obeying it, living up to it that will entitle us to God's promise, he that keepeth the law. Happy is he. And so the vision that we cast will determine what kind of church we will build. It will determine the level of our happiness. And I know that there might be a couple of people in this sanctuary that say to themselves, well, I don't have anything to offer. I can't be part of casting the vision. So I'll just sit and follow. We are all able to have our own thoughts but please don't say that to me. If you are a child of God, God has by his spirit given you talents and gifts. He's given you knowledge and wisdom and you're not called to hold on to them, but use them in the house of God for the benefit of the whole church. And if you choose not to share your gifts and talents in the house of God, I might warn you right now, you are in danger of perishing. And I don't mean that you're going to physically die. I'm talking about spiritually fading away. Falling away from the love that God has shown us through his son Jesus Christ. You see, I think we are either walking toward God or we're walking away from God. And if we're walking away, we are walking away from the happiness that he promised us. And so for years years there has been talk about a leadership team in our church now is the time to build that team men and women working together casting a vision to make sure that we do not perish but that we thrive share your ideas things that you've seen work in other churches let us know things that did not work in other churches Share the things that are outside the box because what box is big enough for our God? If you are in your 70s or 80s or 90s, share your ideas. If you're just a kid in your 50s and 60s, share your ideas. <laughs> if you are a regular attender, if you are a member of this church, if today is your first time in our church, Share your vision. 
We are a senior adult church and we do not have to hang our head when we say that. Knowing our ministry focus is better than having no focus at all. You see, we're not an old church. We are a young church. And we are full of possibilities, amen? Amen. So what kind of church do we want to build? Do you think we can? That was not a rhetorical question. Do you think we can? In the Gospel of Mark, a man rolled up to Jesus looking for healing for his son. And he looked to Jesus and he said, If you can, take pity on us. And Jesus looked at this man in the eyes. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible to him who believes. Do we really believe that all things are possible to those of us who believe? I want to affirm my commitment to this church. Trisha and I know that it was not a mistake four years ago when we came to this church. And together, together, we're going to build a vision that God wants in our church so that the people do not perish. It's all of us that casts the vision. But I will tell you, casting the vision does not end our job Part of our job is catching the vision. We all need to be on the same page. We need to catch the vision. If casting the vision takes all of us, it will be required of all of us to catch that vision and understand it fully. In a football team, if a quarterback casts a football into the end zone and there's no one to catch it, what's the phrase? Incomplete incomplete. Casting the vision and not catching the vision will make us an incomplete church. And that word should never, never describe a church. In the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, we shall not all do what we are doing here today. Everyone doing whatever is right in his own eyes. In Ephesians, the Apostle Paul wrote, There's one body, there's one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who is over all. It must be all of us that cast and catch the vision as one. But again, that does not end our job without carrying the vision, any vision that we cast and catch, it does not move forward. Any vision that we cast becomes stagnant, and it just sits there, it rots away and dies if we do not carry it forward. Carrying the vision that God gives us is just as important as the first two steps. And while we are all needed to cast the vision, we are all called to catch the vision. But if we do not carry it, there's no reason to have a vision in the first place. Let's just turn out the light, lock the door, and perish. So as a body of Christ, as a body of Christ, we have to cast it, catch it, and carry it. The same vision. And I don't want this to sound like a Newt Rockney speech. And I certainly don't want to sound like little Mary Sunshine up here. Gee whiz, kids, it's going to be swell. But I will tell you, things will not always be easy. Some things are going to have to change. And when things do not always go the way we think we should, we can never lose sight of the vision. We must be able to to go from failure to failure to failure without losing any momentum. And there cannot be divisions, but support of the body of Christ as we all move forward, as we all have the same vision. And I don't mean we're all going to agree every time. But as one body, with one vision, we will not perish. We will thrive. And the vital thing in our vision will be the gospel of Jesus Christ. We will not just proclaim it We will teach it, and so we must live it. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is simply this. God loves you, and God has a plan for you.
But there's this thing in this world called sin, and no matter how good a person is, we cannot reach God because of the sin in our lives. And so what God did, he reached down to us through his son, Jesus Christ. It was Jesus Christ who paid the price for our sin on the cross. He was buried in the tomb, and Acts 13.30 said God raised him from the dead. And when we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for the sins of mankind, that he was buried and when he was raised, if we believe that, then Romans 10.13 is true. He who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? Amen? If the gospel is not our focus, our vision, we are doomed to failure before we begin. Because the vision we cast for this church, it has to come from the Word of God. He that keepeth the law, happy is he. It will be the vision from the Word of God that will keep us happy. So what is the excitable preacher saying today? I'm just repeating what the Word of God says. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Vision is the ability to think about or plan the future with wisdom and imagination. And that vision must begin and end with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But it's all of those things in the middle that will make us distinct in our community. And as we cast and catch and carry the vision God gives to us, we must be expecting to be happy because that's what the Word of God tells us. Where the Word of God is read and rightly spoken, where there is forgiveness, where the faithful people have one mind and one spirit, the people cannot perish but thrive. Amen? Amen. And sometimes I think in 20 years... Will some of our children come to this church and will they look, scratch their head and say, what happened to that church? Or will they be able to see that church, that church still has vision? Because I believe Lincoln Community Church has vision and we will not perish. God be praised. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Let's stand, shall we? Before we close in prayer, I want to let you know that we have hot chocolate this morning. And what a great morning to have it, amen? It's cold outside. So go get you a cookie and some hot chocolate. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. We pray that you would just be with us, Father. And Lord, we're so thankful for Pastor Jody and Tricia and what they mean to our church, Lord. And thank you that you've been with us during this time of transition and that everything has gone smoothly, Lord, and that it would continue to be that way. Lord, just be with these folks as they leave today. Keep them safe and healthy. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.